We start with these catastrophic floods in Europe. The western German states of Rhineland, Palatinate and North Rhine-Westphalia have experienced their deadliest floods in living memory. These are some of the images coming in from those areas. At least 43 people have died. Heavy flooding has turned streets into raging torrents, as you can see, and many rivers have burst their banks, sweeping away cars, sometimes buildings, and much else besides. Residents have been posting videos on social media. This is a particularly striking one. Just look what happens as this hits a bridge. And let's hear from one resident. We should our community centre was just crushed and is stuck to the bridge over there. And a 40-ton truck must be stuck there as well. A house just standing over there tilted over entirely. You can imagine this sort of thing happening in Asia, but not here. Well, this is the village of Schultz. At least four people have died there as they waited for rescue from their roofs. Some of the houses in the village were simply swept away. And houses in the district are still at risk of collapse. A state of emergency has been declared. And as you'd imagine, rescue efforts are ongoing. Police helicopters and soldiers have been deployed to help stranded residents. And we also know two firefighters in North Rhine-Westphalia have died. The capital of that region is Dusseldorf. Malika Farkaro is a journalist there. Yesterday when I was walking with my sister back home and we couldn't go home and our car could not pass because otherwise we would have been drowning, we've just been devastated. So we've never seen anything like that and actually fears are looming of a second wave of floods. I don't know if you can see it but the grey and the sky around me is grey. We expect more heavy rainfalls from 1900 to fall and people are really fearful. Well, as Malika was saying, more rain is forecast across these areas. We'll hear from BBC Weather on that in a moment. First of all, let's look at the reaction from some leaders within Germany. Malu Dreyer is the chief of the Rhineland Palatinate state. She's described the flooding as catastrophic. She said they are, they are dead, missing, and many people still in danger. All our emergency services are in action, she says, and risking their own lives. Now, Chancellor Angela Merkel is in Washington meeting President Joe Biden, but she said she's shocked by the disaster and she spoke earlier. These are peaceful towns who are now living through a catastrophe and one can say a tragedy. There's no word to describe such strong rain and floods other than as a catastrophe. I'm shocked by the reports of the places which now stand completely underwater and the people who are in extreme danger, standing on their roofs awaiting rescue and who've been rescued. I grieve for the people who've lost their lives. We don't know the number, but it will be many, some in the basements of their houses and some who are working as firefighters trying to bring others to safety. And I give their families my deepest condolences. Well, this graphic shows the rain across Europe. As you can see, Germany isn't the only country affected. Belgium, the Netherlands and France are all experiencing flooding too. We'll go to Belgium in a moment. First of all, though, here's Jenny Hill in Schult in the west of Germany. There was, many here told us, no warning. Homes destroyed, lives lost in a matter of minutes. The water ripped up the roads, tossed cars aside like toys. <laughs> We met Margareta just as she arrived back in the village of Schult. She and her family fled last night. At the very last minute, she says, a fireman got us out. The family are safe, though her son was injured. He's in hospital. Margareta points out what was her neighbor's house, but says she doesn't know what happened to them. As to her own property, half the house has gone, her daughter tells us. In Schult, they're still in shock. Michal and his friend had just finished refurbishing their pub. They were supposed to open on Saturday. Better news for their neighbor's dog. They managed to pull him to safety just in time last night. <laughs> it's hard to imagine that just yesterday this was a quiet village street. What's worrying people now is that there's more rain forecast this evening. What will happen, they're asking, when the water levels rise again? For now, homeless and fearful, they mourn their dead and wait anxiously for night to come. Jenny Hill, BBC News, Schult.
Well, from Germany, we move to neighbouring Belgium, and in particular the region of Wallonia, which is badly affected, especially the province of Liège. Have a look at this. It's in a town called Purgatoire. It's completely flooded, as you can see. So is the nearby town of Spa, and we know that at least six people in Belgium have died and several more are missing. Then these images show people in the town of Pepinster being rescued by boat after they sought refuge on their rooftops. You can see a little one there wrapped in an emergency blanket. In nearby Liège, the mayor is asking people to evacuate some parts of the city, and for those who can't leave, they're being asked to move to the upper floors of their buildings. And this is why. The Meuse River, which flows through Liège, is expected to rise considerably, but you can see from these pictures it is already on the verge of overflowing. And if it does do that, then parts of Liège are certain to flood. There are also concerns a dam bridge in the area could collapse too. Let's get more details from the BBC's Nick Beek, who's in Brussels. We've seen this record rainfall cause a number of major rivers across Europe to burst their banks. You talk about Liège specifically. We've just seen some video of a police car crawling through the, the very wet streets there, giving this emergency message saying people should leave their homes if they can. And if they can't, if they've got an upper floor, if they've got a first, second, third floor, they should go to higher ground. And the concern there is that the river moves is potentially set to raise more than 1.5 metres uh, in the coming hours. So with that is a fear that a nearby dam could collapse. So that is why Belgium's third biggest urban area is being evacuated, or certainly people are being asked to leave. Uh, we can hear the sirens in the background here in Brussels, flooding here too in the capital. If you look at the geography, this is focused on an area really where, where three countries meet. So the most western part of Germany, the most southern tip of the Netherlands, and then to the, the east of Belgium. So yes, they may be separated by borders, but you've got emergency services that have swung into action and really are facing some very difficult operations. Uh, in one particular place, Vervia, we saw a woman film from her window in amazement as cars simply just were taken down what would have been the high street, this very thick brown water, a torrent carrying vehicles away. And we know in that particular place, four people have died. Also further north in the Netherlands, care homes have been evacuated. And so it is a real concern for lots and lots of different people. And the emergency services are doing all they can in what clearly are really difficult circumstances. And as we've been hearing, the rain is set to continue. Well, this is how the forecast is looking for the next five days. More rain, as you can see. Let's hear from Darren Bett from the BBC Weather Centre. Ros, let me show you the radar picture first of all. You can see how the rain developed and became heavier and stationary, really, across western parts of Germany, across the border into the Netherlands, Belgium, and into parts of France as well. Wettest weather was across these western and southwestern parts of Germany. And with that sort of rainfall falling in 24 hours, that's about three times the July average rainfall, which is why we've seen these devastating scenes of flooding. And even though the rain in in the last 24 hours hasn't been as intense we've still seen some river levels rising now the low pressure and the weather front that's brought the downpours is weakening and that's why we've seen the, the rain easing off in some areas during today but there's still some heavy perhaps thundery downpours to come during friday that'll be uh, heading its way eastwards across germany with the heaviest falls onto the alps and then as we move into the start of the weekend the rains continuing to move further east some downpours likely in poland through the Czech Republic into the Balkans and parts of Italy. So it's slowly going to become drier in Germany. It's going to become drier, sunnier and warmer in Belgium, the Netherlands and France. Now, every time we have these extreme weather events, the question comes up, are they linked to climate change? Well, Armin Laschet, who may succeed Angela Merkel as chancellor next year, says there's no doubt they are. Here he is. Nehmen diese we will be confronted with such events again and again. And this means that we need more speed and climate protection measures, European, nationwide, worldwide. And then this is Dr. Hans-Martin Fussel from the European Environment Agency. Well, any rare extreme event such as this one is always a combination of long-term climate trends and chance, or as, as you may say, bad luck. So you cannot um, attribute a single event exclusively to climate change, but there are many indications that climate change played a role in this. 
warmer air can hold more water, more moisture. Extreme precipitation has significantly increased across Europe in recent decades. And for the particular federal state of North Rhine Westphalia, which is one of the two affected states, there are actually high resolution precipitation data going back 70 years, which is quite unique in Europe, with a minute resolution showing that these extreme precipitation events have indeed increased considerably, at least uh, over the last 40 years. And climate models predict that this will also increase in the future.